Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the strange and unusual literature that I've found in my travels. Today, it is Thursday, and you know what that means um, if you're familiar with this channel. If, you'd, if you've just gotten here um, by someone's recommendation, hello, it was a pleasure to meet you. Um, go check out my other videos. And also, uh, since you don't know, today it is Poetry Thursday, a day where I discuss all the wonderful poetry, uh, all the weird poetry, all the sometimes normal poetry. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of different poetry. Uh, today, I, uh, I wanted to explore, you know, around the weird again, so I went out and found a Chinese poet by the name of Ha Zhen. Uh, he wrote All You Have is a Country, uh, which I will be exploring today, a poem about disillusionment uh, with the country you were born in. So something interesting um, that I didn't know about Ha Zhen, uh, or about China in general, is that there's an entire school of poetry about uh, uh, that, that, that includes uh, Chinese poets. It's called the Misty Poets. I don't know exactly know why it's called Misty, uh, but these poets are, are, are a school of writers, really, uh, that, um, that gained prominence in uh, the 1960s during the time of China's Cultural Revolution. Uh, the Cultural Revolution was a period where, uh, you know, Chairman Mao was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I usurped more power by getting rid of uh, the people who weren't true communist in the government and whatnot. And he called upon the, uh, the young people at the time to help him uh, overtake, you know, all these establishments and institutions that still had some capitalist non-communist leftovers uh, from when Chiang uh, Kai-shek was in power in the 1940s. Uh, so, you know, the, um, uh, that was that was something that happened, the Cultural Revolution. Unfortunately, it, le it left a lot of people on the side. It, it made dissiden dissidents of many people. Uh, it made uh, public enemies of, of many people uh, simply because if Mao didn't like you, guess what? You're you're on the bad list. You're you're uh, you're in for some bad times. Uh, and like, although it's clear that like you know there was a need to expunge the m maybe more American friendly elements. Uh, uh, in China, because you know America would take any and all opportunity to co to overthrow the government. Uh, how he went about it was was kind of like you know exclusionary to a lot of a lot of Chinese citizens, and they became disillusioned with with the government at that time. And this continued throughout the 70s and 80s with the Tiananmen Square incident, and even today, uh, where you see um, certain people in power. Uh, committing certain human rights violations um, with the Uyghurs and with uh, with other groups, uh, so that um, that is something that that is happening uh, and continues to happen, and that's where we find ourselves with with Ha Jin, who lived in China and now doesn't live in China, and he's sort of critical of China, but he also writes about how he he longs for the China that he knew. Uh, which is which is a bit sad, uh, and that's the main focus of his of his poem today. So without further ado, I'll read the poem and then do a little uh, analysis for you. Uh, this is All You Have Is A Country by Ha Zhen. You are so poor that all you have is a country. Whenever you open your mouth, you talk about the country to which you can no longer return. China is a giant shield that you use to conceal your cowardice and to preempt the onslaught of duties and hardships. You dare not take these as your rights. The warm sunlight, clean water, fresh air, a happy mood for an ordinary day. As long as you live, you want to grieve for the fairy tale of patriotism. You dare not take a country as a watchdog. A good dog wags its tail to please its master. Becomes fierce in deterring burglars. A bad dog ignores invaders and only bites and barks at its master. You dare not clasp the dog's ear, telling it you won't have food if you continue to misbehave like this. Actually, you are merely a grain of rice that fell through China's teeth, but you treat it as your god, your universe, and the source of your suffering and happiness. And so that was All You Have is a Country by Ha Zhen, a wonderful poem that is deeply sad when you really get into it. Uh, and I'll explain how deeply sad it is uh, in a few moments. Uh, but again, you can see the, the critique of China uh, and the d disillusionment that comes with 
with uh, being or something not living up to the promise or what you thought it could be. Uh, and I, I think that's what Hajin is getting at there. So I'm particularly interested in how this poem starts out. It says, you are so poor that all you have is a country. Uh, and that's the context from which this poem starts. Uh, I think what he's getting at there is that you are so poor you uh, that like you don't have anything else except your country and what, what it could possibly give you and what it possibly owes you uh, since you are a citizen within it uh, and you are, you know, helping it become as best as it possibly can be. Uh, so, uh, like, it's the mindset of, like, uh, what, what a country can be and what it should be as opposed to what it's become. And I do wonder what, what this poem would look like if it was written another way. Like, you are so rich uh, that all you have is what? Uh, do the, do, is Hajin saying that the wealthy don't necessarily have country or patri patriotism, or maybe they're receiving more benefits than, than others? Um, or is he not getting at that at all? And that's just, just how he chose to wrote the, the first sentence of his poem. Um, something important to consider there. And if you have an answer, feel free to comment below. I would love to hear from you. Another thing that stands out to me is the second, the second verse. It's, uh, you dare not take these as your rights. The warm sunlight, clean water, fresh air, a happy mood for an ordinary day. And these are very basic things. Something that I would say, and many others would say, that everyone should have, you know. Clean water, fresh air, absolutely, those things are wonderful. Uh, and why can't you take them as your rights? Like, it's a poor country that doesn't provide these basic necessities to their citizens. Uh, and I think... Um, I think this goes back to the Cultural Revolution, where a lot of the um, the uh, Chinese citizens didn't have uh, clean water or fresh air. Uh, they 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 suffered a lot of the times, uh, especially as uh, Mao, uh, you know, did everything to move from an uh, 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 agricultural society towards an industrialized society. That left a lot of people again on the side. A lot of people starving and and in a bad position. Uh, so that, I think that's reflective of there, and, and uh, not only the Cultural Revolution, but um, the people starving at, at that time as well. Uh, you know, that's not to say that, um, uh, you know, this only happens in China. This happens in many other countries, including America, where, like, fresh air, like, that doesn't happen in the bigger cities. You get a lot of smog oftentimes, and with all the forest fires that uh, the country isn't addressing climate change, you get uh, some less than clean air there as well, and, like, uh, clean water, not not a real thing in like Flint, Michigan. Uh, so you, you know, really makes you think like he's talking about China, but where else have other countries failed its citizens? I also like really feel for the the two line two lines here. As long as you live, you want to grieve for the fairy tale of patriotism, which is a really heartbreaking um, set of lines there, uh, because. It, I think it's Hajin realizing there that you can be patriotic as, as much as you want, but in the end, the, the country's not giving you what you think you deserve or what it even should give you. The, the fairy tale is a, is a myth uh, that countries sell you in order for you to do what they want and to provide bodies for, you know, whatever war that is going on or whatever stupid idea they have planned. Uh, so I, 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 that, th those two lines stand out to me there. It really th makes me think of John F. Kennedy's line, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Uh, and he said that during the Cold War, uh, when a lot of people were asking for their rights, you know, you had MLK being like, hey, we would, l we would love for, and not just MLK, but Malcolm X and a whole bunch of other civil rights leaders saying, hey, maybe it would be nice if you didn't kill us. Maybe it'd be nice if we could vote. Maybe it'd be nice if we could have all of these fancy things that aren't so fancy and that you actually give to all the white people. Uh, so, um, in like for John F. Kennedy to sort of say that at that time, it feels very weird timing and like it really highlights how like some people like give their life for their country and it in the end the country gives them nothing in return and then finally um i want to point out the uh, the last verse um actually you are merely a grain of rice that fell through china's teeth but you treat it as your god uh i think it really highlights how like china is a behemoth like all countries are behemoths uh, and like although you may patronize it, be patriotic towards it, give everything you can, 
ultimately you are but like a flea on the hind of a dog. Uh, the, the country doesn't really notice you. Uh, if anything, it's scratching you to try to get you off. Uh, it, it's, you're insignificant in a lot of ways. And so to be patriotic towards this uncaring thing, uh, you, it, it feels wrong in a lot of ways. And I think that's, that's what Hajin is getting at there. Uh, if you, if you feel different, feel free to, to comment below again. I would love to hear from you. So that was All You Have is a Country by Ha Zhen, a very interesting poem that, uh, with a lot worth examining and reflecting on, uh, not just on China and the Cultural Revolution, but on the own, but on the, your own country in which you live. And how your own country, although you may be patriotic towards it, maybe it's not giving you 100%. Or if it is giving you 100%, perhaps you want to examine why that's happening, uh, rather than just gleefully accepting it and noting how, like, maybe some other people don't have everything they need in their lives. I will put a link to the poem in the description so that you can find it and read it and have a great time. And after you're done reading, perhaps comment below and tell me um, tell me what you thought of it. Uh, if you've read it before, you know you can you can say that. Or if you if you want to tell me that I'm wrong about something, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, I would love to hear from you and have a conversation about this wonderful poem. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that you can. Uh, you know, tell other people about beautiful poetry and Poetry Thursday. Uh, but in, until then, you know, uh, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and semi-patriotic travels. Farewell.